Creative Life Survival Guide, where I share survival tips on creativity, productivity, and balancing a creative life. I'm your host, Laura. Hey, creatives. If you're like me and you want to start a podcast, but don't necessarily have all the time in the world to dedicate to adding music or editing, Anchor does all of this for you. It's a super easy app to use and it distributes your podcast as well. So you can be heard on Spotify, Apple podcast, and whatever other podcast app you might be listening to now, and you don't have to do any of the work. So download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hey there, creatives. Things have been a little weird lately. Uh, You know, we're in the midst of new territory with the coronavirus pandemic, and it's kind of thrown our routine out the window. Um, I'm kind of in the same boat. My routine has been thrown off too, and I've actually found that with my routine being thrown off, my creative juices just aren't flowing as much as they were before. And it's really frustrating because I feel like I'm falling behind or kind of failing myself because I'm not producing as much as I was before. And, you know, I also want to help you and, you know, in doing so kind of helps me as well when your creativity is struggling a little bit. So I kind of looked through and found about 20 strategies that, you know, might kind of help you get your creative spark back and get that going back in your life. And so the first one today is to meditate, even if it's just for a minute. Now, I know meditation is not for everyone, but you know, just taking a moment to maybe gather your breath, uh, slow your thoughts, you know, all of these things can be, you know, helpful, even if it's just for, you know, 30 seconds or a minute or however long you can kind of manage that. Right now we're, you know, constantly facing news and negative news and stress. And it's important to make sense of your busy mind. And sometimes slowing down is all you need to maybe, you know, process some new ideas and filter out some of your creative thoughts. I mean, they're in there. You've been creative before. It's just about kind of slowing down, letting them kind of come to the surface and, and letting yourself be, you know, a little bit smooth for the moment. The, the second tip is to kind of learn from your environment. And for most of us, it, it might be a new environment because you're stuck in your, in your own home. And instead of feeling like that feeling of stuck and feeling of, you know, being, being holed up in one place, maybe use it as an opportunity to explore new creativity. Um, open your mind up and kind of be willing to take these new ideas in. Um, you know, inspiration might be sitting on your desk right now. So take a look around you, take a look around your home and see, see new newness in it. See new ideas around you. Third is to consume as much as you can. And I'm talking about information, not food, though, you know, sometimes food can kind of help spark your creativity a little bit as well. Um, You might have a lot more time on your hands and, you know, maybe use that time to read and use it to your advantage. You know, read in your niche, read outside your niche, read other genres, and you know, learn from people who maybe create different or create the same things as you and use those tools to your advantage. And the next tip, I like, I know it is so tempting to kind of wait for that perfect idea. You know, you you maybe have some ideas, but you're not really, you know, pulling the trigger on some of them. The fourth tip for you is to just trust your gut. Write everything down, no matter how crazy or silly it seems, you know, collect it and then use that as a list for later. You know, you don't have to act on any of these things now. Maybe just creating a list is your creative output and that's okay. You can always use that later. I mean, you might write down an idea, think it's, you know, the dumbest thing in the world and maybe a week later or a month later or a year later, you look back at that list and you're like, wait, I might be able to use this. And, you know, I've had that happen to me before. So, write everything down. You can worry about whether it's good or not later, but you know, if you have it, you're never going to forget it. So definitely write your things down. Now, one of my favorite inspirations is Austin Kleon's Steal Like an Artist. If you don't know the book, you definitely need to get it. It's super easy read, but it's really good for creativity. So my fifth tip is part of his book is to emulate your favorite creators. And this isn't just about copying and pasting, but you know, using their ideas, their creations, and kind of making it your own. 
you know, you're, you're collecting when you, when you take in information or you read other artists or you read writers or you look at other pieces of work, you're collecting all of, all of this information into your head. Now you have the opportunity to kind of turn it into something of your own, you know, build out on what other people have created and use every single piece of information that you've brought in and turn it into something of your own. So it's not copying and pasting. It is curating a list of things that you really enjoy and then kind of making it into one bigger thing. Um, and to build off that, question everything. Question absolutely everything. Dig deeper. That is my sixth strategy to sparking creativity. Dig deeper, ask questions, pick ideas apart, find these new solutions and things that you maybe haven't looked at before. And, you know, we might be stuck inside, but my seventh tip is actually super common. You've heard it before. It's get exercise, move around, get the blood flowing. You know, even if that means you just take a dance party and, you know, turn on your music, put your headphones in if you don't want to bother anybody else and just kind of dance around have a little bit of fun, get the, get the blood moving, uh, you know, maybe work up a sweat. And, you know, if the weather is conducive, it's obviously better to get outside, get some fresh air, get some sun, use that time to clear your mind. Some sweat and movement will always help kind of get those creative juices flowing as well. Now, as creators, we show our finished products to the world. That is the nature of what we do, which makes this next suggestion perhaps a bit harder. And the eighth tip that I have for you is to accept imperfection. Now, I'm not encouraging you to, you know, blast out something and, you know, not take a look at it, but maybe, you know, maybe take a look at your next piece of work and just go ahead and be okay with it. Put it out in the world. Ideas are by nature unrefined and fresh. They're, you know, just split second thoughts, you know, run through our minds And now's kind of a really good time to practice letting go of the idea of perfection and just going with the flow of things. So, you know, maybe that next blog post that you decide to write, maybe you put it out there without editing and just kind of see, see what kind of magic you can make out of it. And, you know, just have a little bit of fun with that. Let go of this ideal, perfect, you know, working on something until you are so sick and tired of seeing it. Just kind of let it out in the world as it is and see what happens. So my ninth strategy is using constraints to fuel your creativity. And right now we are in the midst of an ultimate constraint. We have limited resources at our disposal right now because we are stuck inside and we can't go shopping. And Amazon is, you know, just packed and, you know, there's no no such thing as two-day shipping anymore because they are, you know, worked to the bone. But, you know, with all of these limited resources at our disposal, maybe you challenge yourself to create with just what you have laying around. So, you know, maybe you take away your usual tool. So, like, if you paint with paintbrushes, maybe you take away your paintbrush and you try to paint with your fingers again. Do finger painting. And, you know, if you typically write with a computer, maybe you try to write in a notebook instead and use a pen or use a pencil. Um, I suggest a pen so that you can't, you know, sit and try to edit all the time, but that is my personal preference. That is a constraint. Um, You know, maybe, maybe you create your own constraints. So if you write, maybe you try to write a story without using a specific word. Um, You know, having those little challenges for yourself, you find new, new solutions to, you know, create your work and it forces you to kind of think outside the box and, and think outside your usual routine and and it might help, you know, spark some of the creativity. So you, you have to work to use things that maybe you haven't used before. So my 10th and one of my favorite strategies is actually decluttering your workspace. So I'm a minimalist, so I try to have as few things around as possible. I still own things. I still, you know, have my trinkets. I have my little decorations, but I'm not surrounded by sites I don't enjoy. So when I sit down at my desk, I don't see a cluttered mess. I see something I actually enjoy. And when I sit down, I feel refreshed. I don't feel like I'm swamped with papers or little trinkets or just things that, you know, kind of get in the way. I've created a space that's clear and it all brings me joy. So when I look around, 
I'm, you know, not brought down. I don't have these negative emotions with my space. And I actually look forward to sitting down at my desk. It, you know, in the first thing in the morning, I sit down at my desk. And as soon as I get home, I sit down at my desk and do some more work. I enjoy sitting at my desk. I enjoy being in the space that I'm in. And so that, you know, kind of helps my creativity a little bit. So when I know I'm sitting down, I know that I'm going to be able to get work done. I'm going to be able to focus. So my next tip is to challenge yourself outside your comfort zone. So maybe think about an idea or a medium right now that you've been afraid to pursue in the past and and think back to, you know, what what might be holding you back. Was it you know, time constraints? Was it fear of failure? Was it perfectionism? Was it, you know, this feeling that you don't have the skills or, you know, whatever it is. Now, you don't need my permission to create, but I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to tell you right now, you have permission. Let go of all of those fears and just do it. Just try something new. Right now, I am trying something new with this podcast. I have podcasted before, but it's on you know, topics that maybe aren't in my specialty uh, range. So, you know, I'm using this time, I'm using this quarantine to practice a new skill and try something new. And it's scary, but that that excitement that I get every time I sit down to do it, um, you know, think about the first time that you actually started your creative pursuit, whether that's painting, writing, drawing, whatever it is. Think about the first time you sat down. Think about how ex- scary and exciting it was at the same time. And you know, get that feeling back. Try something new. Just because you're a talented painter doesn't mean you can't be a talented drawer as well. I don't know if that's the right term, but you know, think about all of those different exciting feelings that you used to have when you first sat down, when you first were learning how to do your creative pursuit and get that feeling back. You know, sometimes you can, you can kind of relate, you know, if you have never painted before, maybe you, you know, try writing, you know, whatever it is, but get that extra little excitement back in your life and and find something that maybe sparks creativity and be a beginner again. Now, in conjunction with getting out of your comfort zone, try doing something new. So like I was just saying, change your normal creative routine. If you, you know, normally paint, maybe you try writing or you try drawing or you try using a different paint. Um, Maybe you change your routine itself. So maybe I'm a morning person, but since I've struggled recently, I've actually found a lot of my writing has been done at night. So it's done later in the day. Um, And it kind of helps me just get out of that normal rut. So, you know, we feel stuck at home. We feel like, you know, our days are kind of passing really slowly. Maybe we switch things up. We, you know, add a little spice to the end of our day. We, you know, maybe wake up a little bit earlier and go to bed a little bit earlier, but, you know, work on different things throughout the day. Um, You know, just switch up your normal process and see what can happen with that. And even more than changing your process, again, change your medium. If you're a writer, maybe try a different creative pursuit. Maybe try podcasting. You know, you can still write your script, but, you know, I write a script, but I don't necessarily follow it. But, you know it kind of adds a little bit of element and fun to to the uh, creative process. It, it just, you know, helps you explore a new craft and kind of have that beginner idea again of, you know, that excitement that you're doing something new and you're doing something fun. Now, number 14 piggybacks off of the meditation and exercise and encourages you to get outside. Obviously, you might not be able to go to a park or a zoo, but you could still, you know, get out into your neighborhood, see new sites, go to a local trail, or maybe you just sit on your back patio and you observe what's happening outside. I know that's a really common thing in New York right now. I'm not in New York, but, you know, people are sitting out on their balconies or they're sitting, you know, out on the roofs and they're just, they're just watching other people and they're interacting that way and they're getting their social uh, interactions those ways. But it's also a great idea to spark some creativity within you. You're you're looking at, at outside sources for this sort of inspiration or these new ideas. And 15 is repurposing old work. So actually this podcast is something that I've written before that I have kind of tailored to uh, our current situation with coronavirus. So, you know, maybe go back and find something that you maybe didn't finish before, or you rewrite a post that maybe you've learned more about and you've come up with this new idea or you've, you know, kind of approached it and gotten a new perspective and use these old creations and turn them into something new. 
you know, build off them, make them better and turn them into, you know, this used to be a blog post and now it is a podcast. So there are a lot of different options for repurposing your old work and and that in itself, creating something new is is in itself a different form of creativity and it could help you. And maybe now actually, surprisingly, could be the perfect time to collaborate with somebody. So you might have to do it virtually, yes. And it is a little bit harder specifically if you create physical things. But consider bringing someone else into your creative project, getting a new perspective, you know, getting their ideas and and trying to bounce, you know, these new things off of somebody else. You know, maybe you call in a podcast host. Maybe you have somebody write part of a chapter you're, you're struggling with. Maybe tell them, hey, this is where this chapter starts. This is where it ends. What would you put in the middle? What sort of things, you know, if you know the characters or, you know, beta readers are really good for this as well, you know, kind of giving you suggestions and feedback on, you know, what the writing is and, and you know, kind of how the characters align and things like that. You know, maybe you call somebody in for help and use your connections, you know, add something new to your creative work. I have been, you know, kind of, I've been doing camp NaNoWriMo, so I'm recording this in April and I've had a lot of, you know, really good days and really bad days when it comes to writing. And I have found that reaching out to some of my friends, some of my writer friends, and just kind of being like, I need to get excited about the writing process again. And, you know, let's just geek out over writing for a little bit. And it's been awesome because, you know, everybody is so supportive and they want to, they want to see you succeed. And so just reaching out, getting that kind of excitement back into your life and into your writing and whatever it is that you're, you know, creating, have that kind of help you and, and use that to your advantage. Use your connections to add this, you know, little element to your creative work and just kind of make it unique. Now, my 17th strategy is about committing to your work. Now, I'm I'm the worst person at this. I have started so many projects and, you know, just kind of like, oh, I don't really like how this is going. You know, I have two half-written drafts. Um, I completely rewrote one and also didn't like that one as well. So my 17th strategy is committing to your work and finding a project and following it until the end. I, you know, give your all, see what you can create and just just follow it to the end. It may not be the best thing in the world. It may not be your favorite thing in the world, but the fact that you saw it to the finish line, you created something that you can obviously make better later, um, but you're gonna be more invested in the work. You're, you're, you have finished this piece of work and you're like, it's done and now it's time to make it better or it's time to perfect it or you know what i finally finished this it's not what i want it to be but i'm happy because i finished something and and that's something to be excited about too is you know when you see a project and in its final stages and you're like you know what i did that i created that um and, and that's a wonderful wonderful thing as well now you may you know maybe that that strategy really works for you but it's also possible that within all this, to spark creativity, you actually have to step away from your work. You know, instead of trying to force yourself into this, you know, creativity or, you know, trying to live up to, you know, what you did before, maybe a break serves you better. You know, it's it's okay to not create right now. You don't have to be creating right now. It's a tough time. It's hard. People handle it differently and you're going to handle it differently as well. And I think right now there's a lot of societal pressure to keep creating because you you see it on Twitter, you see people writing all of the words, creating all of these art pieces and, you know, sharing it with the world. I think, you know, so many people are making, I think for their small animals, like little art galleries. That seems so crazy to me. I don't think I would be, ever be able to do that, but but that's not, you know, my style. That's That's not what I need to do. And you don't have to be creating all the time. You have to do what is right for you. If that means you create this little, you know, art gallery for your little gecko, that's awesome. That's really, really cool. But if you have to step away, now is also the perfect time to just take a breather, you know, sit back from your creative work, let it breathe, let your work breathe, you know, not just you. And just kind of see where it goes. Let the momentum take you where it needs to. And don't feel this, you know, pressure that you have to be creating right now. In the same breath, 
this is also a really good time to celebrate your wins, celebrate the things that you have accomplished, whether it's during quarantine or during this pandemic or not, you know, creating and finding new ideas is not an easy thing. And you have cultivated them. You have, you know, built them into a final project or a partial product. And, you know, that is so difficult. And I think a lot of times as creatives, we, you know, finish something and then it's like, okay, we're done. We need to move on to the next thing. And we don't actually celebrate the fact that we just created something out of nothing. And I think that a lot of people kind of take that for granted. And so maybe now is the perfect time where you just kind of sit back, you take a breather and you celebrate some of the things that you have accomplished, you know, be proud of your work and the things, you know, that you've done in the past, be proud of the work that you've created, the little things that you've made out of nothing that is so important and and you deserve to enjoy that as well you know you put this work out into the world you created something and you deserve to be happy about it you deserve to you know kind of sit back and be like yeah i just did that i did that i created something and i think that's a wonderful wonderful thing to do is just to celebrate your wins and finally this kind of bounces off of that as well number 20 is have fun i think As creatives, you know, we kind of have this pressure to, you know, I have to create, I have to make this finished product. And we kind of forget the journey. You know, creativity is so much easier when we enjoy what we do, when the little pieces kind of come together. And, you know, in that same in that same way, just trust your heart and and kind of let it follow, you know, let it spark within you. Let it let it be your source of, you know, inspiration and and just kind of dive into your work. When you love what you create, creating is so much easier. It's not necessarily simple. And you know, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it, but when you love what you work, you're going what you work on, you're going to continue showing up for it and you're going to appreciate all the things that you've created up to this point because you've put in that hard work. You have sat down at your desk or table or drawing board and you've done something. And I think that that in itself should help keep you inspired and hopeful. And if you really need me to, you know, call you up and, you know, tell you how wonderful you are and how wonderful your creations are and kind of give you that pep top, I am so here for that. And, you know, I I think that we all need to inspire each other and be hopeful at this time, you know, and it's hard to spark creativity all the time. It's hard to always be on and always be creating, but, you know, I hope that these, you know, 20 tips kind of remind you to to also just be kind to yourself. And, you know, maybe what you need is a break. Maybe you, you know, want to keep creating. But I think you should let yourself relax when it comes to your creative pursuits and follow what you need to do because you come first. You need to fill your personal tanks, be that you know, health, wellness, mindfulness, creativity, whatever else you might need, you are a priority. And so when you want to balance a creative life, when you want to survive, just like, you know, this is the creative life survival guide, focus on you and make yourself a priority because creativity comes from within you. And if your tanks aren't full, if you aren't able to give to yourself first, you're not going to have anything to give to your work, which is what we love as well. So we want to be able to give all of our love to the work that we love as well, the creative work that we love. So definitely give yourself, you know, a little bit of priority in this crazy, crazy time. And I will see you next week, creatives. I hope you really enjoyed these, you know, 20 tips of sparking creativity. for listening to this episode of the creative life survival guide be sure to subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you choose to listen to find more information or survival tips for your creative life head to laura-winter.com